So, okay, maybe at this point you are beginning to see that there's a pattern there, but I don't know if you guys ever listened to, do you guys know who Time Cube, what, or who, or, wait, what screen was this on? I think it was on this screen. Does anyone here have heard anything about Time Cube? Maybe you guys are too young to have heard about Time Cube. It's one of those internet crank theories. There's a guy who used to run a Time Cube website. He said, time is cubic. So when you see crazy theories, one of the things is this. You can almost explain anything. Like, given some set of facts, to kind of come up with some idea to just explain all the known set of facts. It's not all that hard. Anybody can do it. In fact, that's uh, what we think early mythology was. People look at thunderstorm, thunder striking someone, and it's easy to think, oh, God is, one of the gods is angry at the tree. And that's, <laughs> at least that's how we think of what the ancient thinking was. And even today, that kind of instinct hasn't changed. So if uh, all this is what it is, you have all these newly discovered baryons and mesons, and you're just fitting them to a pattern that looks pretty, then that'll, like, that's not very valuable. Like, what can you do with it? The reason, uh, gel, gel, anybody know how to pronounce this name? No. I'm just gonna say Gelman. The reason Gelman's theory is stuck is because of um, really a striking, striking uh, prediction he made. So um, as I was alluding to earlier, there were just so many particles discovered that uh, scientists were getting frustrated with all these new particles and no coherent theory to explain them. And Gelman's theory was one that actually predicted existence of a particle, a new particle, down to the correct mass and how to produce them. And that comes with uh, the next set of baryons. So I said with the baryons, there are actually spin three half baryons. And uh, I think I have a table of them somewhere here. Let me scroll to the table. Um, I don't know, it's here somewhere. I don't think, did I have any, I don't think I had any spin, oh, I had a three, spin three halves. Um, that doesn't seem enough. Um, oh, oh, okay, got it, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I need nine of them. Uh, and Gelman is the one that would, um, Gelman uh, predicted the, the tenth one. So hopefully, if, unless I messed up, I should have listed the nine of them here because those are the ones that were first found. So delta baryons, all spin three half, and apparently there's one with a charge of plus two, um, but no charge of minus two. Um, so delta baryons, and there's the sigma baryons that are somehow different from the previous sigma baryons because they're heavier. And there's Z, Z baryons again, but somehow different from these because they are also heavier. And there's, did I mess up? Yeah, okay. Um, I list, I don't know why I listed this one. So, omega baryon. Yeah, so this omega baryon is, I don't know if I wanna cross it out. This omega baryon is the one that was not yet discovered. So, People had known all these, these nine baryons, and, um, and um, Gelman's theory predicted this omega minus, that, and he predicted how, what kind of experiment, or what they would look for, that would, interaction that would produce the omega baryon. So you can kind of arrange these baryons a similar way as how we arranged this. So let me just do that. We're just gonna arrange it by mass. That's how things seems to have worked so far, so let's do that again. So um, this pattern is going to look a little bit different because the lowest mass, instead of having only two, apparently I have four of them, the delta baryons. So, um, so you have delta minus, delta zero, delta plus, and delta double plus. Uh, you have, and on the next row, this is the next set of particles that are now slightly heavier. Um, you have sigma minus, 
sigma 0, sigma plus. There's technically an asterisk there to indicate it's different from this, but I'm going to skip it in the interest of time. And there's the Z variant, um, two of them, C minus, C plus, or not plus, zero. Now, something is different about this shape compared to this shape. Like the hexagonal shape, it's complete on its own. Like when you look at it, you don't think something is missing. Like it, it's complete. I'm not, I don't have to do anything with it. As you look at this trapezoid, do you feel like something is missing here? What's missing? The tip is missing, right? Like you feel like it should be a triangle instead of trapezoid. I mean, <laughs> at least that's the inspiration. And so this is the particle that Gelman predicted, that there should be omega minus. That there's an additional particle that fits the pattern of this spin three half particles. And once you have it all laid out, then you can kind of do the same thing we were doing before. Um, so there's a kind of charges, pattern of charges that follow. Right? Q equals 2 here, all the way down to Q equals minus 1. That's why it's omega minus. And, um, and the strangeness, it uh, um, ought to have this pattern of strangeness. Strangeness minus 1, minus 2. Huh, I guess that's what you knew about this omega particle. It has strangeness of minus 3. That's probably why it's uh, rarer. If a strangeness violating interactions happen slowly, then um, like to get from strange of minus one to um, here in one step will probably be impossible. You need to start out with something that has strangeness of minus two, or you need to produce, so it has strangeness of minus three. It's more strangeness than other particles that we know so far. And um, oh, and this is how Gelman predicted the mass of the omega particle. He kind of stares at this masses for a while. Okay, 1232. Next step, 1385. So the difference is 153, right? Add 153 to this, you get, um, so if you added 153, you would have gotten 15, 153, uh, 1538. Hey, that's pretty close to this. It's only off by five. So let's just add another 150 to this. Then you would have predicted a mass of around uh, 1683 or so MeV. And I don't know if you can see it beneath me trying to erase it. The, when they actually detected a particle, it had a mass of 1672. So within 10 MeV, he was able to predict or sorry, not 10 MeV, within 15 MeV, he was able to predict what the mass of this last previously undiscovered particle would be. 